Our first ray of sunshine comes from the moon. And I know, I know some of you are thinking, how can you have a ray of sunshine from the moon? Because the moon reflects light from the sun. That's what moonlight is. Don't you remember third grade science? I actually don't remember it either. I just Googled it now. Anyway, here's what's happening on the moon right now. Right now, a Chinese robotic craft is collecting samples on the moon, a touchdown in an area where Apollo and even the Sputnik missions have never ventured. China's space administration says for two days, it will drill, it will collect samples. The goal to bring back about four pounds of dust, of rock and debris later this month. And those samples, amazingly, will be the first brought back to the Earth in 44 years. It's been a while wow. since we've done that lunar exploration. Wow. We haven't collected any moon rocks in 44 years. I'll bet that they've changed a lot since back then. You know, they've probably graduated moon college, met another moon rock, and had some little moon rocks of their own. Then they started moon rock drinking and developed a problem gambling. And then the one moon rock tells the other to get his goddamn act together. And he's all like, why don't you mind your goddamn business? Anyway, it'll be nice to catch up with those moon rocks. And you gotta admit, this is pretty slick of China to do this now. Just when everyone discovered that they lied about their numbers and the extent of the outbreak in Wuhan. Uh, excuse me, China. Did you lie and try and hide COVID when it started? Oh, I would love to answer your questions, but we have to go get rocks on the moon. Also, I just wanna put it out there, but maybe this isn't the best time for humanity to be visiting the moon. I mean, I can't even travel to Vermont without a quarantine. Maybe we shouldn't be sending humans to touch things in space. I don't want aliens coming down in two weeks like, what the hell, guys? You gave us COVID-19. We're so sorry, aliens, we didn't mean it. If, if you put on a mask, it can help. Don't take away our freedoms. But let's go back down to Earth for some news from the United Nations. You know, it's where all the world's leaders gather together for a slumber party. And the organization that brings nations together now has something to bring to the party. The United Nations has now removed cannabis from their list of most dangerous drugs. Marijuana had been categorized by the World Health Organization as a so-called Schedule IV drug. Heroin is in the same group. Well, now a panel voted to move cannabis into a lower category known as Schedule I. It includes drugs that are still considered highly addictive, but can also be used medically. Many countries look to the UN classification for policy guidance. That's right, people. The United Nations has officially removed cannabis from its list of most dangerous drugs, which is fantastic, because if any group could mellow out a bit, uh, it's world leaders. I mean, right now, Israel and Palestine hate each other so much, but if they smoked a little weed together, couldn't they become friends? Well, the answer's no. They'd probably still hate each other, but would they wanna get off the couch to do anything about it? I mean, smoking weed, could even help end the Jolof Wars between Nigeria and Ghana. Adibo, you know when I smoke and get really high, Ghanaian Jolof is not totally shit, huh? And you know what, why stop at them? Any world leader smoking pot would be awesome. Cause they'd just be there like, oh yeah man, mm, that'll be some Irie Kush right there. Ah uh, sir, you are the prime minister of Sweden. That's how you know it's good. I will say this, I would not want to be a UN translator right now because that job is about to get real strange. And it is with this that the South... <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> oh. Whoa! You guys see that? Moving on from the world of diplomacy to the world of hip hop and home decorating. Yeah, that's right. The new Drake just dropped and I can't tell you how it sounds, but I can tell you how it smells. Here's a unique holiday gift. Have your home smell like Drake, Bill. No. <laughs> the singer has Drake. released a series of scented candles and the scent called Carby Musk claims to smell like the Canadian rapper himself, filled with notes of musk, ambers, <laughs> cashmere, suede, and velvet. It costs about 80 bucks and includes a marker for you to write the recipient's name on the candle. Whoa, 80 bucks. I mean, I, I love Drake, but I feel like he's really overestimating how much I want my house to smell like an emotional rapper. And even if I do agree to spend $80 on a Drake smelling candle, I need to know which Drake smell I'm talking about. Cause you smell different at different times. Like, am I getting Drake before the concert or after the concert? 
because the one Drake smells like blueberries with a hint of Egyptian musk. The other Drake smells so sweaty, you can tell that his balls are still stuck to one leg. And finally, the Queen of England. She's the titular head of the United Kingdom and the reason every British actress now has a job. And now, she's got a job opening. Here's a job opportunity that does not come around very often. Queen Elizabeth is looking to hire a new personal assistant in the private secretary's office at Buckingham Palace. Now, the person will be in charge of managing requests, coordinating meetings and appointments, and drafting correspondence. It comes with a two-year contract and a salary of almost $50,000 a year. Okay, okay. 50 grand a year is a decent salary, enough to buy some of those Drake candles, but not enough for the Queen's personal assistant because you're the assistant. You're gonna know all the queen's secrets. If she wants to keep her Megan voodoo doll under wraps, that's gotta be worth at least 50 grand more. And the queen better not say it's because the economy isn't great. Because that's a weird excuse to make when you're sitting in a castle. I really wish we could pay you more, but money is really tight right now. Uh, your diamond crown is crooked, your majesty. Oh, sorry. It's because of all the diamonds. And look, on some level, it would be really fun to work for the queen. I mean, think about it, managing her appointments, having tea with her, telling the cops you were driving after she runs someone over. But it's also gotta be super stressful. You know, there's so many tasks to keep on top of. Every day is like, wait, was it feed the corgis and behead the traitor or feed the traitor and behead the corgis? Ah, what have I done? Of course, the truth is these days, a celebrity assistant is just basically a 20 something year old who manages social media accounts, which is gonna be really confusing for the queen. So I don't quite understand this latest tweet from us. What is the it that Idris Elba can get? 